Welcome to the meta game with Oni Black Mage, and today we'll be covering Viva Pinata. Now, I'm just gonna start off with saying that this is definitely gonna be one of the most random cutscenes or openings for a game I've seen since probably Katamari. Since everything you see here isn't something you actually do in the game. I mean, look, oh, you have this nice, spacious, large gardens. Maybe I get to have all sorts of friendly pinatas. Maybe I get to explore the factory, launch pinatas. Maybe I play mini games like catch pinatas like that. I don't know. Maybe I get to watch them dance around and do crazy stuff. All sorts of fun stuff like that. But no, actually, what you do? It's actually a life sim, believe it or not. But don't get me wrong. Despite its very misleading opening, it's actually a very engaging and fun game. But to be honest, I actually wouldn't have given a chance if it wasn't for a friend actually recommending it to me heavily when I finally came in. But I haven't regretted the choice. But now, as I do the metagame, someone has... A QB kid actually has requested that I send her a couple hints on the Pinata, And I figured I might as well do a metagame review on it. So let's get started with the basics. Viva Pinata uses uh, somewhat of a universal save system. You can make as many gardens as you have memory units left in your uh, your hard drive, but you also get to keep your gold and gardener level for all your gardens, which is great because that means you can make pinatas in one garden and then use the mail post office system to mail it to yourself. I moved most of the things out of my garden to help make this video make it a little bit more plain, but you see. I have mostly about 30% of my garden's water, just to appreciate some of the water species there. You have basic controls there. There is no missable items if you pick on, you can always go back and do something. You can always destroy, sell, recreate, there, there's no such thing as permanently losing anything really. Alright. And there's a lot of tips and tricks on making money. Or whatever not, but you can always go somewhere else and find those. There's lots of great videos out there. But I'm going to show you a couple probably lesser known things that I think will help any garden. The first is uh, getting wild pinatas to not only come in your garden, but stay in your garden. Like, let's take this unicorn here. I'm going to take a gem at it once, place a couple right there, bait the wild one. Alright, yep, it took notice of it. Gonna walk over, and as soon as it takes interest in it, you're gonna need to build an appropriate fence around the wild pinata. And I say appropriate because if you have a big species like the bear, or the elephant, or the hippo, it's gonna crush a traditional wooden fence. You're probably gonna go with metal or stone for that. But this is just a unicorn, and since it can't fly or jump really high, I'm just gonna build a basic wooden fence around it. And you can do this. No, I zig when I should have zag. Walk right past my bait. Uh, that's fine. I'll just continue building it. But, uh, yeah, this works for just about any land-based pinata. You bait it with something that's stationary in your garden. Once it walks in, build a fence quickly around it, and it'll essentially be trapped in your garden until you tame it. Which I find a lot easier than watching it wander around aimlessly, like Rorios did. Maybe tame themselves? I don't have patience for that kind of thing. Yep, alright, let's come back again. Maybe not. Alright, that's fine. Another bonus, I think a hidden bonus of fences, is if you have a lot of fighting in your garden, fences are a wonderful way of keeping apart rival species, or sometimes even having a fence in your garden at all will cut down on fights between species that normally wouldn't fight to begin with. I personally found a couple of experience with that. Alright, looks like the tuna coin's coming back, I think. Uh, yep, alright. It's within my trap. Let's go ahead and close the last round of escape out of it. And there we go! One trapped unicorn. There's a lot of other things that you can have on your garden. The torch for helping turn uh, tapflies into red hot. It's a great way to make money early on. Because all you have to do is plant daisies and track the tapflies. Captain's Cutlass and keep out Professor Pester and his other ruffians. If you don't have that yet, a couple swords also help keep out some of the ruffians. Statues to increase the value of my garden. But let's take care of how to earn a little bit of money a little faster. You see there's my fence there with a couple of my gems to help tame that unicorn. 
but one of the, albeit tedious ways, other than maybe selling very valuable things such as Pixies and uh, Red Hots, is simply uh, planting tulips. So go over to cost a lot as soon as you unlock tulips. You'll see there are only a nice 33 gold. Pick a nice open spot, plant them pretty close to each other. A star-like X pattern right there. Five in a row, or five in a bunch. Take out our watering can, and you'll see they fit all nice within one little burst of water. Get them all at the same time. Now we're going to fertilize it. As you know, fertilizing flowers are very easy. Same thing with vegetables and fruits, because all you do is you fertilize them three times in a row, and that's it. They're max fertilizing, which is another great way to get uh, gardener levels really quick and easy. For it, we heard the little ding there. That means you did it correctly. With uh, bushes and trees, you're going to have to wait until it actually buds, which means you have to sit there and literally watch the grass grow until you see the buds. Alright, that's done. Plant it a few times. If I go back, you will see these tulips have grown. Just give it a little tap with a shovel, and you'll see because we have the max growth bonus, it's going to give us another seed and several tulip buds. Now, don't forget to highlight the specific bulb itself. You see it sells for a nice 150. You can also sell the stem itself for another 75, so it's 225 on a plant that'll do probably three, maybe even four tulips at a time, in a bunch of five, for costing you only about maybe a hundred and maybe almost 200 gold to get a thousand gold back. That's definitely getting back value. Finally, for those who have Pinatas they want to tame that require rotten vegetables or fruits, simply take whatever it is you need to make rotten, plant it in the garden, whip out your shovel, and give it a quick tap. There you go, and you'll see, it instantly turns rotten, you don't have to wait a couple days. Well I hope these are a couple of tips that will help you with your garden, I mean there's plenty of other great tips you can have such as putting gas max on, can air yourself to put them the mine to increase mining, set bowls into the mine to dig up little piles of dirt so that way you get something, hire multiple diggerlings for the mine. The mine literally pays for itself. It's so great. Not only getting the dragon as you see a mine running around. And don't forget to ignore Lethos because she's useless. But like I said, if you have any more requests for games that I have in my library, feel free to comment or email me. I'll be more than happy to do what I can to help you. But thank you for watching the metagame and stay tuned for the next episode.